Hey cruisers, welcome to our Nog vlog. Is that music too loud? Do we need to turn it down a little bit? <laughs> okay, now I can't see how to turn it down. Oh man. Oh my goodness sakes, Mr. Chris Tips TV, I found it. Here we go. How is everyone doing? How's the volume? A little bit better? A little better, Mr. Chris Tips TV? Nice. So wonderful to have all of you here. I have my little Nog and my little candy cane stir stick and I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Merry Christmas, Merry everything. Today's vlog is sponsored by CruiseLine.com where you can find reviews, tips and photos from real everyday cruisers. So here is how today is going to work. First of all, Mr. Cruise Tips TV is gonna roll the chat so that all of you who are watching this after the fact can enjoy knowing what everyone was talking about by way of seeing it on the screen. So, wanted to thank everyone so much. What, Mr. Cruz TV? Let's do another shout out to our, our sponsor. We're gonna do another shout out to our sponsor. I think Mr. Cruz TV had a little issue with the logo, getting it up on the screen. So once again, this episode is sponsored by CruiseLine.com where you can find reviews, tips, and photos from real everyday cruisers. And happy, happy anniversary five-year birthday to cruiseline.com. We love our friends over there. We're so happy for them and really a blessing to us in 2017. Looking forward to partnering with them again in the new year in 2017. All good now, Mr. Cruise Tips yeah. TV? Now we can roll the chat, roll the chat. All right, you guys, so wonderful to see everybody here in the, live, uh, in the live chat. A lot of you came in early. Thank you so much. I know this is a very busy day for a lot of you. We're all wrapping up our Christmas shopping put some fun posts on Facebook this morning about describing what everybody was up to <laughs> before the holiday. And I asked everybody to answer in emojis, but really what happened was that everybody answered in gifts on Facebook. And it was really quite funny because everybody's gifts involved some sort of alcohol. I shouldn't say all of them, but a lot of them were like, you know, people chugging giant vats of wine. I think this is a stressful time of year for people. So it's, it's probably not all sheer, uh, joy and pleasure, but probably like, okay, you know, we've got family obligations, there's still shopping to do, there's a lot on people's minds. So really funny, if you don't follow us on Facebook, make sure you go over there and check out that post today, it was so great. Um, before we get into our main topic today, which is all Q&A for about 45 minutes, and you're welcome to ask questions anytime. I just wanted to thank all of you who have bought blankets at Minky Couture to be distributed by Fathom Travel. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a video from about a week ago that we explained this wonderful thing that we're doing where we're going to be, uh, we've collaborated with Minky Couture and Fathom Travel that's doing a, a wonderful purpose-driven cruise to the Caribbean in January to send matching blanket donations to families in St. Thomas that will be hand-delivered on their January 20th cruise on Crown Princess. And I want to thank all of you who have bought blankets from Minky Couture. Um, this is a very special project for me. We really wanted to do something for the Caribbean victims. I know it's been a long time since these hurricanes have happened, but there's still a need and we wanted to do something creative. I know many of you have probably already sent money and other non-tangible donations and that's wonderful. It's probably one of the best things that you can do. We wanted to do something extra, something special in time for the holidays. So I would like to ask each of you, if anyone here in the live chat has bought a blanket, please let us know which one you purchased and how you're liking it if you've already received it. I know some of you are like our subscriber, Jennifer already received hers and she wrote to me on Facebook this morning and said she was really enjoying it. So I'd love to hear from you and I would love to hear your questions. Um, we have been getting a lot of questions on our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and I've been compiling them for a few weeks. I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them today. It's just a little bit busy because of the holidays, but I will be sure if I don't cover your question today from YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, I'll find it, I'll answer it, and if I don't, you can hunt me down and ask me again, I promise. So, Carrie, you have a question. Shoot that question out at us, Carrie. You guys are welcome to start shooting the questions right now. I'm gonna go ahead and answer them from the bottom up as I see them, and we're gonna jump right in today, and I'll wait to see what blankets you guys bought. We'll do that later on. Okay, so I see the first question. Let's see here. Ah, ARM said, noticed you wore more shoes than usual last cruise, any reason? That is such a good question. And the first thing that I noticed when I watched our outfit of the day video, ARM, from Alaska was, oh my gosh, I took so many shoes. And you're right, it's because I didn't fly. I drove to port and we packed a lot of suitcases and I just had extra room. I had tennis shoes, I had two pairs of sandals, I had Ugg boots, I had formal nightwear, and I had regular dinner shoes, probably five or six pair, which is way more than my usual limit of three pair, but we were just 
not worried about weight on this cruise, so that is why. Thank you for the excellent question. It's funny that you're saying that because I was actually thinking about it myself. Okay, uh, Clint Bedreau says, what's your favorite cruise and why? Clint, we have so many. I think it's hard to say. I can't narrow it down to just one, but we've had some very special cruise experiences. Um, our cruises to Alaska have been very special and memorable. Our recent cruise to the Panama Canal was pretty darn amazing. I also tell people a lot that one of my favorite cruises was really the first cruise I ever went on with my husband because I got to see cruising through his eyes, and I'd only sailed on a teeny tiny Carnival Fantasy class ship, and so that was really special special for me. Um, ARM, we do not avoid winter cruises at all. Um, in fact, we do often cruise probably somewhere between, I'd say, I, I, maybe not so much winter, but we probably do some cruises in early December, which I guess is more late fall. Now, one of the things that happens for me is that in my day job, things get a little bit I feel like I need to be present between the months of January, February, and March and not take a lot of vacation time. So I don't generally take a lot of vacation during that time. So maybe you're right to say I avoid them, but it's not for the reasons of maybe wanting to not cruise in the, in the wintertime. It's more because of my professional obligation. So hope that helps you. Okay, let's see here. Um, Mahoi says, my first cruise is in April. When should I do online check-in with Carnival? As soon as you're able to. I don't know when you, if you booked in April, you should be able to check in already to a certain degree. If there are any areas that you cannot check in uh, that say, okay, look, it's, you know, it's too soon. You can't check in yet. They'll let you come back to it. But I would go plug that passport information and your personal preferences in right now. Okay. Sean says, hi, Sherry. I have a question for Caribbean cruise is Carnival or Princess best? Sean, I can't answer that question without knowing more about you. Um, it's more a, qu a question of which cruise line is best for you. If you are into a more tranquil experience with older passengers, um, a little more upscale, Princess is for you. <clears throat> Pardon me. I might need to take a little sip of my nog here to refresh my thirst. Sorry, guys. My ice is noisy. If, on the other hand, you like a little more of a party vibe, live music, modern music playing all the time, contemporary music, I should say, and you like um, great service but a lot of energy on your cruise, you're an active cruiser, and you like to party, Carnival might be for you. So that's a tricky one. Okay. Caleb, which blogs are you talking about? Panama Canal? Caleb, my husband's starting to edit Panama Canal now. We are behind because we went to Panama Canal while we were still editing Alaska. Oops. So I would say, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, what do you think the first vlog will come out for Panama Canal? Probably in January. Probably in January. You don't have a mic on today, do you? No. We're still trying to get my husband mic'd up. You guys, this is just not working out. I'm not worried about we're, we're having a hard time. So probably January for that. Okay. All right. I know there's tons of questions coming in. Bear with me, guys. I'm just taking a moment to scroll and see what I can find here. Okay. While you do that, how about mm -hmm. Michael Nichols said, are you banned from the ship's restaurants if you choose not to dress up for formal nights? Um, Michael said that. Michael, Michael wants to know if you're banned from the restaurants if you choose not to dress up for formal nights. The short answer, Michael, is usually not, but it depends on how dressed down you're going. If you were to show up in a pair of jeans and a decent looking shirt, they'd probably let you in, but if you tried to show up in shorts and flip-flops, they wouldn't. So there's a very fine line and it varies so much by cruise line that you're going to find that experience is different. Um, I've seen kids in swimsuits in the dining room on certain cruise lines before and I've seen people turned away for wearing um, shorts on other cruise lines. So that's a very, that's a very tricky question. Okay. Oh my goodness, you guys, please be patient with me. We're just a little behind in the questions, but we will get there. Okay, so Angela Henry, going on your first Alaska cruise on Star Princess, and it's your first time with Princess. What has been your favorite excursion in Alaska? We're stopping in Skagway, Juneau, and Ketchikan. We loved everything that we did in, on our last cruise to Alaska. The White Pass Rail is a must-do if you're going to Skagway. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful experience. It's very historical. It's somewhat dramatic, but yet it doesn't require any physical strength. In Juneau, make sure that you watch our vlog because in Juneau, we challenged ourselves to do as many different things as we could possibly do in one day as a family of three in Juneau, and you're going to see a lot of activity there. You could do the 
the Mount Roberts Tram, there's many, many excursions you can do. We did an awesome excursion where we did three different things in one day. We did a salmon bake, we went whale watching, and we went to Mendenhall Glacier all in one day and then did more after that. You can do a lot in Juno. Be sure to check out Travel Juno as well. Wonderful website and resource for you for planning in Juno. In Ketchikan, we actually did something very exciting and went on an excursion to um, watch bears. So watch all of our vlogs from Alaska and you'll see what some of our favorite things were. All right, lots of questions coming in, guys. Thank you so much for your patience. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alicia, very much um, for all for the compliment. I'm sure a lot of you saw our outfit of the day video, and we had a lot of fun with that. We did finally released our outfit of the day video for my Alaska cruise, and um, it was a 10 night cruise. So you saw what I wore morning, noon, and night. Um, on sea days and port days and formal nights and all that good stuff. So if you haven't seen that video, have a blast and watch it. It's really fun. And thank you guys so much for having confidence in me. I am not, I don't consider myself a fashion or beauty, beauty vlogger by any means, but so many of you have encouraged us over the years to just show what, show us what we're wearing and uh, show all of you, excuse me, I can't seem to get the words out today, show you what we are wearing. And I'm really glad that we did because we actually have a lot of fun filming it. Um, and we tried to listen to your suggestions this time. We tried to show what I was wearing around different parts of the ship and not always just in the cabin in front of the mirror. And hopefully we accomplished that for all of you. So thank you for all of your suggestions. Um, we put all of those suggestions into play and hopefully you liked it. So. Caleb wants to know when we're on the bliss. We are on the bliss in October of this year. And so Cal Seth, yes, my eggnog is spiked. I need to get through it a little faster. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be more articulate. It's too, cold in here. <laughs> it's too cold. That was literally one of the factors in uh, my eggnog. Sorry, my nose is also a little bit runny because it's that time of year and it is freezing where we live. It's 37 degrees and in California that ain't normal. We are not prepared for this. A thermal shirt is my idea of winter wear, yo. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm warming up with rum. This is really happening, but it's actually really good. And the candy cane stir stick, it's kind of fun. It's kind of, kind of cute and functional. So anyway, yes, so Soft, it is spiked. All right, so yes, livened up. Mr. Christmas TV, are you commenting over there? Oh my goodness sakes. Ah, Karen has a question about the Panama Canal. Karen said, when is the best time to sail the Panama Canal? So Karen, the rainy season technically ends in mid-December, although we found that during our sailing November, late November, that we were fine, but I would recommend avoiding September and October if you can. I've heard it's really hot, more hot, more humid than December. So if you can go November through April, you're gonna be better off, okay? So yeah, Alicia, thank you. I loved it when my son, my husband edited in the part of my son filming me at the end. It's hard because he really wants to be involved and some of his footage is actually really good. So we give him every chance that he can. You guys, Alicia's referring to the, to the funny at the end of our outfit of the day video uh, for our Alaska, uh, Alaska clothing. So it was a lot of fun, okay. I'm sure that I've missed most of the comments that were early on, which is not fair. Mr. Christopher's TV, help me out. What have I missed? Let's do it. Okay, ready. Carrie Bradley. Carrie Bradley, coming at you. Okay. Can you put drinks in your luggage, not your carry-on, but your regular luggage? No, don't put drinks in your luggage, Carrie. Don't put marbles in your nose. Don't put drinks in your luggage. Sorry. <laughs> you guys, come on. It's almost Christmas. I'm not going to be serious today. I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to. Are you taking away my rum? You give me back my, my nog. <laughs> I'm actually just in a really good mood, you guys. Come on, it's a three-day weekend. This is awesome. And I'm glad to be here with all of you. I'm so glad how I'm so glad to see how many people actually showed up. We thought that everybody would be out shopping and gallivanting, and we're so happy that you're here. So I'm actually kind of giddy about that. Okay, next question. Top top. Carolyn Spear. Carolyn Spear. Best recommendations for New England, Canada cruises. Ooh, Carolyn, you can't go wrong with any Canada, New England cruise that you choose. So pick the cruise line that you love and go for it. We went on Holland America's Mazdam, one of our favorite cruises, although it's really hard to say that we've had favorite cruises because my goodness sakes, they've all been great, right? But we really enjoyed Holland America's level of service and we were on a very small ship, the Mazdam, and it was fantastic. Next up, ready, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, what Stand you got? Sandra Erickson. Sandra, okay. Do cruise lines cancel without a reason? Do cruise lines cancel without a reason? No, they don't cancel without a reason, but they do cancel with a reason sometimes. Um, I can think of a few reasons off the top of my head. This last year, 
Cruise, uh, cruises have been canceled due to being chartered by FEMA for disaster relief. They've been canceled due to propulsion issues or related mechanical problems. Um, they won't cancel for just a random reason, like, oh, not enough people are on the ship, we're canceling. I've never heard of that happening. But um, they'll cancel due to a weather emergency or something like that. But that's about it. I'm ready. Next. Ronnie Sims Ferry, how Ronnie. many formal nights for a five-day cruise? Okay, Ronnie, how many formal nights for a five-day cruise? Usually one. Usually just one. Sometimes two. All right, I'm ready for the next one. So Cal Seth says, by the way, I'll be filming that packing tutorial this week. <laughs> Yay! So Cal Seth is our packing ninja guy. He's going to film a packing tutorial, and he's going to send it to me, and I'm going to share it with all of you because he's an expert. And we are wannabe packers. We are really not experts, but So Cal Seth has been our, um, our, what do you call it, our sensei. Yep. He's been our sensei for years, and so I can't wait to see it. Let me know when you get it. Okay, I'm ready, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. Let's I've got one from Courtney coming in at the end here. It says, going on NCL Epic, staying in the Haven, and we embark on December 30th, so I'll be aboard over New Year's. Any fun New Year's tips? Yeah, Courtney, Michelle, take advantage of the ship's activities. I know that sounds kind of basic, but go out and do what it is that the ship is offering. You'll have a blast. I'm sure that they're going to do a really good job. Um, I will tell you that NCL has really great white hot parties. You need to pack an outfit that's white head to toe. On our last Norwegian cruise, my husband and son and I all packed white outfits. We didn't even go to the white hot party, but we roamed around the ship in the evening in our white clothes and we felt pretty, pretty sassy and it was a blast. So that's what I would do. Um, Solar Eclipse says, what are some suggestions for St. Tom, St. John, St. Martin, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, Barbados, and San Juan? Solar Eclipse, this sounds like you're going to have a really nice cruise. Um, what people tell me about San Juan is that it's wonderful to walk around, that you can literally just, as Matt at Royal Caribbean blog says, just get lost in San Juan. Um, I've heard that's a great thing to do. St. Martin, we did an ashore excursion in St. Martin. We rented little boats and went kind of around the island, but there's tons to do. You could even just rent a cab or a private van for the day and have them drive you all around the island. You could go to one of the many beautiful beaches, but I will let other folks weigh in on St. Kitts, St. Lucia, and Barbados and St. John because I haven't been to any of them. Are you calling in St. John or are you calling in St. Thomas and hoping to go to St. John? I've heard St. John is absolutely stunning. All right, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, what you got? Oh, I got something for Julie Woodward. Julie Woodward, I'm listening. She's actually looking for suggestions for blogs or vlogs on P&O like us. Oh, yeah, I don't know of any a P and O vlogs, well, let's but put it out there for the community. hey, cruisers, do you know any vloggers who cover P and O? I will tell you that I follow on Instagram. I follow P and O Edge. They have a great Instagram page. It's really fun. So start there, follow them, and then obviously you're going to need to do a search. But we'll see if anybody else has any um, suggestions here. P and O is is it just Australia or is it UK and Australia? I don't know. We'll find out for you. Let me ask. Okay, let's see here. What else do we have here? Well, we have to officially dedicate this live stream to Wicked Wonder 1979. We do? It's birthday time. Oh, Wicked Wonder's having a birthday? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Wicked Wonder 1979. It's tough to have a birthday right before Christmas, and yours is what, two days before Christmas? Yes, Yesterday, our son's is December 10th, and it's tough. It's not, you know, you're dividing your attention, so to speak. So happy birthday, Wicked Wonder. And yes, as my husband said, we officially dedicate this episode to you. So we're so glad. Oh, and I also want to do a shout out to Mike and Cheryl, who are very, very close to their back-to-back -back Caribbean cruise. And I know Bonnie is joining you, at least on part of that voyage. So Mike and Cheryl and Bonnie, an official Bon Voyage preparation. I know you guys are probably knee-deep in packing. Okay, let's get some questions answered here. When is the best time? This is from Seize the Day. When seize the, the Day. When is the best time to do Canada New England? Okay, Seize the Day. The best time to do Canada New England is any time that they are sailing. So now, I will add that if you want to try to catch those beautiful, um, the, the fall colors, most people tell me that the first week of October is right around the best time to do that. But I know we can't control the leaves, right? We have no idea when they're going to change, when you're going to catch the fall colors. We actually did the week, the last week of August on ours, and it was fantastic. I really liked that time of year because it was, it was hot some days and cool other days, and I felt like I, I wasn't cold all the time, and so that would be 
my recommendation is try not to focus so much on when you go. Pick a time that works for you with your work schedule, the pricing of the cruise, and just life in general, and go for it. There's no bad time. It's, it's, you know, it's seasonal anyway, so you're going to be fine. I'm ready for the next one. Nadia Thomas, how many hours did you have in Juno to do all those things? We are, Ooh. we are in at 7.30 and out at 1 p.m. 7.30 to 1. Okay, Nadia, you wanted to know how many hours we had in Juno. We had a longer day than you. We are 7.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. My suggestion is that you do book a tour that day or just try to keep it simple and stay close to the port. Now, if you wanted to book a tour, there will be plenty of them that will get you back in time. So try not to stress out about that. Even if you do not book through the cruise line, if you book independently, they're going to get you back on time. They're However, doing, they're doing the glacier. They're doing the glacier. Oh, you're going to Mendenhall? Okay, you're going to be fine. However, what I want you to do is I want you to walk off the ship at 7.45 a.m. and get on the bus as early as you can. What happens at Mendenhall Glacier is most people go too late and they don't have enough time. This has happened to us every single time we've been to Mendenhall. We've never given ourselves enough time. There's the visitor center. There's hiking trails that take time and you want to explore these things. So get on that bus, go to Mendenhall Glacier, make that your day and get on a bus that feels comfortable for you. Maybe something like noon, get on the noon bus to come back. You'll be back by 1230, an hour before the ship sails. Even if the bus got a flat tire, you would be okay. So that'd be my suggestion. I love that you're going to the glacier. Just stick with that. Don't try to do too much in that, in that you know six hour window. If you were bored at Mendenhall and you wanted to come back and hit the Mount Roberts tram, the Mount Roberts tram is right at the base of the cruise terminal. And so you can just literally jump on the tram, go up and spend a half an hour there and come back, but it's expensive. Next question, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. I'm ready. From Sean Narricott. Sean. Um, it's a carnival question. Okay. I have put, if I have an allergy with certain foods when I buy the ticket mm -hmm. on the ship. So I'm guessing. Yeah. Special allergies. Okay, Sean, if you have a food allergy and you're going on Carnival, that's great that you've notified them in advance. However, there's something I want you to do. On your first night in the dining room, I want you to look for the head waiter or the maitre d' and I want you to specifically tell them about your food allergy. They will fall all over themselves trying to make sure you are safe. They will accommodate you. They will provide you with um, alternatives as needed. So don't stress about it. The major cruise lines handle food allergies very beautifully. All right, next. You know, Nadia said that she wanted to do the three-item excursion. We, we mm -hmm. did that. We planned that ourselves, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We actually coordinated that one through Travel Juno, through Kara. So you can do that on their website, and I can get you the website for the, um, I, I want to say it's Alaska Travel Adventures. So we'll, we'll find out what three excursion you can do. And you can't, you could probably do that in the amount of time you need it. I think it's a five hour excursion. They're not going to let you take that excursion if they think you're not going to make it back in time. Okay, I'm ready for the next one, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. We, we, um, I, I'm looking at the birthdays. Lots of birthdays around this time of year. Dot com mom says she's never been spoiled for her birthday and everyone forgets it. Dot com mom, you've never been spoiled for your birthday. Well, I would like to wish you a very special happy birthday. Know that we're thinking about you. I'm sorry that you don't feel spoiled. Is your birthday this time of year and it's like you get overshadowed by Christmas? Is that what's going on, Mr. Cruise Tips I TV? Think so, yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but you're special to us and we're so happy that you're here. So happy birthday to you. That makes well, me sad. Why don't we get to some of the YouTube questions? Okay, sounds really good. Okay, why don't you do me a favor and check the, the early chat questions and see what I've missed, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay guys, we have some questions that have come in through YouTube, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to those and see what we can do. So Miss Jessica Five said, hi CTTV family, wondering if you can do a video talking about Fort Lauderdale, hotel experience, getting to the cruise port, the port itself, and where to eat while there. We've never cruised out of Fort Lauderdale before and we're wondering those things. Okay, so Miss Jessica Five, I don't have extensive experience sailing out of Fort Lauderdale, but we did on our most recent cruise sail out of Fort Lauderdale to Panama Canal. We stayed at the Embassy Suites Fort Lauderdale, which was wonderful, really good experience. The one thing I would caution you about, which you will see in our day one vlog from our Panama Canal cruise, is that you do have to pay for the shuttles that take you to the cruise pier. So furthermore, you have to pay for the shuttle that takes you from the airport 
to the hotel. My regret about staying at the Embassy Suites is not just jumping in a cab when I got my luggage off the luggage carousel. So with that said, that hotel is wonderful. They do have complimentary breakfast. I wouldn't say the food is spectacular at the complimentary breakfast, but all of the rooms at the Embassy Suites are suites. One thing you should know is that that area is very, that area where all the hotels are near the cruise port has a lot to offer. You're gonna find a lot of restaurants within walking distance or cab distance that you could take. You could also eat in your hotel if you get in late, so try not to worry about that. You could order room service, go down to the bar or restaurant and have something to eat there and not have any problems. If you stay at the Embassy Suites and you need groceries or you wanna buy wine to take on the cruise, Publix, the grocery store, and Total Wines are within walking distance and the front desk would be happy to direct you to those two things. Okay, next question is from Amy and Jason Clayton. You guys, Amy and Jason Clayton need excursion suggestions for Mahogany Bay and Costa Maya. If anybody has Mo Bay and Costa Maya suggestions, please let them know in the live chat. Thank you so much. Okay, Bren Revless says, um, she's in commenting on our Outfit of the Day video here on Cruise Tips TV from our Alaska cruise. She said, I feel like we have very similar styles. I don't know if you already have a video, but if not, would you consider a hair tutorial for the curls? And you know, Bryn, that I'm not very, I'm not usually all that good at hair and makeup, but we did make a get ready with me video that we will be posting on our cruise gear channel very shortly. So I'm gonna do full makeup and hair, curling my hair included on that channel within the next two weeks, you'll see that go live. So make sure that you go to our cruise gear channel, which you can find by clicking on channels here or just searching cruise gear on YouTube and you'll find it. Kelly Taliaferro says, I was wondering on Royal Caribbean, if you purchase the drink package that has coffee with it, do I still need to purchase the coffee card? Okay, Kelly, from my research this morning on Royal Caribbean's website, both the refreshment package and the deluxe beverage package come with premium coffees, so you should not need to purchase an additional card. If anybody knows otherwise and wants to let Kelly know, please do so here. I feel like we're going really fast today with all the questions. Okay, Grit and Fortitude says, I have an issue. I've been on seven Carnival cruises and I love Carnival. I'm racking up my VIFP points and those you guys are Carnival's lo loyalty prog, prog uh, seriously, loyalty program called the Very Important Fun Person. That's what VIFP stands for. All right, so. Grit and Fortitude is racking up points and so invested in Carnival, they're, they're afraid to try another cruise line with the fear that they'll never reach diamond status or whatever it may be on the other ships. Kind of loyal to Carnival, so not sure what to do. Okay, Grit and Fortitude. This is the age old question. It is so hard because I've been in the same boat and I can tell you that I still think that you should experiment a little bit with other lines if you feel so inclined. If you're excited to try Norwegian or Princess or maybe to branch out and try Celebrity or Royal Caribbean, try them once, just once. And if you decide that you like those cruise lines as well, enough to sort of rack up some loyalty there, then you'll know. If not, you can make Carnival your primary cruise line and continue to rack up your loyalty. Totally understand how you're feeling. Embracing Elizabeth says, with only taking a carry-on and having minimal suitcase space in your 311 bag, how do you have enough shampoo to get through an entire cruise? El Embracing Elizabeth, that's a great question. And um, last time I can tell you that on my 10-night Panama Canal cruise, I flew and I had a 311 bag and I totally overpacked shampoo. I had way too much. Um, I didn't wash my hair every single day. It was probably more like every other day on the cruise can always buy more when you get there. But I think I would really stop and think about how much shampoo you use, literally, ounce for ounce. How many pumps are you using every couple of days and try not to overpack it. I think you're more at risk of overpacking it than underpacking it. So that's my take on it. Laura Davis says, uh, will it extra large luggage or suitcases fit under the beds on a cruise or should we only consider buying large just to be sure? Laura, my it brand extra large have always fit under the bed. You should not worry about that at all. If they didn't fit under the bed, you could slide them into the closet. Okay, another question here from Enjoying Life's Journey. Hi Sherry, love your videos. I have a question for Mr. Cruise Tips TV that is tech related. What is your filming setup, editing, encoding software, camera, audio for your live streams? It's always so clear and smooth except for when I can't get my words out, right? <laughs> Not sure if the computer or internet speed would affect this also, any tips would be great. Okay, so Jackie, um, here's the thing. We're using right now a Nikon D5300 to film 
our live streams, yes. The nicer camera does make a difference. We are using a Sennheiser microphone that as you can see is a lapel mic attached to my lapel. So we do use enhanced audio and these are wonderful. They are battery operated as you can see right here. We are very happy with our Sennheiser mics, right honey? Had them for years. Had them for years. We used to use these when we filmed weddings, right? Expensive. They're very expensive. How much was this one, 600 bucks? Yeah. 600 to $800 just for this little piece of equipment right here. But it makes a huge difference. Um, my husband uses the OBS broadcasting software to improve the quality of our live streams. So, right? It's free. Yeah. It's free. OBS broadcasting software is free. So yeah, he wanted to definitely take it up a notch with the live streams. It's, it's difficult for us to just kind of go with what YouTube provides us, but you still have limitations. I mean, obviously you've been following us for a while. You know that we can't seem to get my poor husband's microphone to work. A second mic completely messes up the live stream. We have echoing issues. We have stream strength issues, all kinds of stuff with that. So, all right. I am ready for the next question, Mr. Cruz Tips TV. Okay, let's come back and see if you, if you address these. And okay. Then okay, okay. Kara Bradley wanted to know if you can bring pop out of the 12 pack to the boat or does it have to be in the original 12 pack? Mm. Kara, you could probably take the pop, the soda, in whatever packaging you so desired. So I would recommend leaving it in its original packaging because it's less likely to be inspected. But I have found that they may even inspect it if you do have um, have it in its original packaging. Now make sure your cruise line does allow soda. Some of them don't allow soda pop anymore at all, Norwegian being an example. And Royal Caribbean officially doesn't allow it, but people do it all the time and it's a don't ask, don't tell approach with Royal Caribbean. Norwegian will probably confiscate it. Princess Carnival, you should be okay as long as it's not plastic bottles. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. Tiffany South just wanted to say thank you about the pool tip because they had an hour oh. all by themselves at the pool. Tiffany went to the pool on embarkation day. Good job, Tiffany. I know, isn't it blissful? If you, I mean, everybody else has other agendas. Mostly their agenda is eating, which I get it. I'm usually starving when I get on the cruise ship. Going to check out their room and roaming the ship. The pools are generally quite lovely. Can Good. You eat on a cruise ship? You can eat on a cruise ship? What? <laughs> Angela Henry, did you see this? Angela I didn't Henry see Angela. Angela would like to know what our favorite Alaska excursion has been. They're going to Skagway, do you know? Oh, we got that one already. Okay. We got hers. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay, I'm what ready for the next one. Solar eclipse. What are some suggestions for St. John, um, St. Martin? Kids? We got that one. Okay. How about James Smallwood's ideas for stuff to do in New Orleans? Oh, I don't know about New Orleans, guys, but I can tell you Cheryl Reno, who's here in the chat, may be able to help you with that. Um, I have never been to New Orleans, but I can answer Gwen's question, what bug spray do you recommend? Gwen, I like good old fashioned off in the spray form, the aerosol spray form, the kind you can get at Target in the sample bin. I like it. Um, I think there are wipes that you could get if you didn't want to take a spray or you didn't want to pack an aerosol on an airplane, which I could totally understand, things like that. Ginny says, Sherry, since booking, I've seen negative press about Coral Princess, that the ship is tired. Do you think it's just picky travelers? Do you have tips about where to watch canal locks in addition to the balcony? Okay, Ginny, there are going to be negative Nancy's all over the message boards about old princess ships. I actually prefer old princess ships over a lot of different types of ships. Is the ship tired? Does it need a refurbishment? Probably. I don't know if Coral is going in for dry dock soon, but I can tell you right now that if I were booking a full transit Panama Canal, I would absolutely choose the Coral, the Island, whichever small ones without even thinking twice about it because even if the ship is a little bit tired, I really don't care. It still has a lot of the wonderful things that I love about Princess, so try not to worry about it. Where to watch the canal locks in addition to the balcony. When you are going through the locks in the early stages, try to get on the front of the ship. I'm not familiar, familiar with the layout of the Coral Princess, but if they do have a secret viewing deck above the bridge, that is where you want to be. If they have a promenade deck that wraps fully around the front of the ship and is shaded, that is double extra super where you want to be in case it is hot or raining. Balcony is great, but you absolutely do not get the full perspective from your balcony. As soon as you get to the last lock, make sure you get to the back of the ship because you want to see the three locks behind you. 
it's, it's kind of cool to see all the water levels changing and the other ships following you after you get through the last lock. So then go, start at the front and then go to the back. And be warned that the, the transits through the locks are very, very slow. Um, if you've been watching our Facebook page over the last week, you've seen me post a time-lapse video of our experience going into the new Agua Clara locks. And I made some commentary and kind of told you the story of our experience that day and how much we enjoyed the slowness of it, how it forces you to just stop and you're, you're completely out of, you have no control and the ship has no control over when, when and how fast they pass through. It's a really cool experience, you're gonna love it. Cheryl posted some tips about New Orleans, hopefully you saw them, so make sure that you rewind a little bit and check those out. Thank you so much, Cheryl, I appreciate it. I knew we could count on you for that. Okay, bye Jackie, have a great shopping trip. We will see you soon. Okay, um, James Smallwood said, what is your opinion on flying in the day before versus taking a red eye the morning of travel? James, I'm 100% pro the day before. Even though it costs you more money to get a hotel room, don't take the risk, especially if you're flying in the middle of winter and you could have a weather delay. So yeah, go in the day before, if not two days before. All right, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, what you got for me? I want to kiss. Yes, I'll take a kiss if you don't have any questions. I see that Boots and Bling for me is here. I don't know if Boots and Bling for me knows that she was Cruiser of the Week last week. Did she know that? Know. You were Cruiser of the Week last week and I don't think you were here. Shame on you. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I know there's probably lots more questions. All right, guys, it's time for you because we're going to wrap up in about 10 minutes. It's time for you to retype your questions if we've missed them and to please accept my apology if we have. I do see that Grit and Fortitude um, has a question here. And Grit and Fortitude, make sure you go back and listen. If you haven't already, I did answer another of your questions um, earlier on. So I got your message on Facebook or Instagram or wherever it was and it's there. Um, I'm bringing a first time cruiser with me in February on Valor. Any suggestions or recommendations on what to in in do to in ensure they enjoy themselves? Because, because I've cruised so much, it's natural for me. That is such a creative and wonderful question. If I were going on a ship with a first time cruiser, I would try to take two approaches. I would make sure that their sail away experience is memorable. Find out what it is that you think that they'd be most happy doing on sail away. Maybe they'd like a quiet sail away on the balcony. Perhaps they need to be up in the action. Get that sail away nailed down and make sure that they have a good experience. I would also recommend that you educate them before the cruise. Tell them what to expect. Tell them about day one. Tell them about the muster drill. Tell them that no cruise is perfect and that things can change and that they might change and to have that roll with it attitude throughout the whole cruise. So that's kind of where I'd start. So manage their expectations before the cruise, get them a nice sail away. And why don't we say this? How about not over planning? Maybe trying to leave a little bit of time for them to really look at the cruise newsletter and decide what they want to do, but don't over plan. I think that can be a bit exhausting. Exhausting. Uh, Stephanie Abbott said, how many swimsuits do you bring on a seven night cruise? Totally depends on where I'm going, Stephanie. If I'm going to a warm destination, probably three. If I'm going to a cool destination like Alaska and I'm still hot tubbing, probably two. Okay. Um, Betsy says, what kind of pillows do most ships have? I'm allergic to feathers. I don't know, Betsy. I hate to say this, but I just don't know the answer to that question, but please do let them know about your allergy. Better yet, Betsy, pack your own pillows. That's what we do. Um, buy some compression bags. If you need some recommendations on that, be sure to send me an email at sherry at cruisetipstv.com and I can get you some links to our Amazon shop for compression bags. Just take your own pillows. That's what I would do. Okay. All right. I know there's more questions coming in. Bear with me, guys. I'm just scrolling. Hi, Susie. Welcome. It's okay that you're late. You don't always have to come all the time. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Mike and Cheryl, Merry Christmas to you guys. Go enjoy your weekend. We love you. Bye-bye. Let's see. Let me hit you with a couple. Yeah, go. Chevy's in first. Chevy's Car in first. Yeah, they have, okay. Carnival, they have an interior stateroom on the Carnival Conquest with a picture window obstructed view and balcony rail is the obstruction. We want to know, was that a good choice? It's at the very front of the ship. Mm. A picture window obstructed view on the front of the ship on Carnival? Conquest. Was it a good choice? I don't know because I don't know what deck you're on and I don't know what's above and below you. In my opinion, this is my opinion. This is not everyone's opinion. I want to be somewhere where it's quiet. I don't want to be near the theater. I don't want to be near a bar. 
I don't want to be near an elevator. So if you are in an isolated area and you have staterooms above and below you, you should be okay. As for the view, it's really hard to say. If you got a good deal on that cruise and you have a good attitude, you're probably gonna have a great time. True that. Yeah, true that. Gerard says, I have an eight-year-old son, so just wondering what your son loves to do on this ship. Aw, Kathy, you have an eight-year-old son too. Our son just turned nine. What does he like to do on the ship? Um, he likes to interact with all of the different staff on board. He usually flirts with all of the gift shop ladies. I'm not kidding you. He makes like relationships with the gift shop people and is on a hugging daily basis with them normally. Um, he loves water slides. He's getting to the age too where he's starting to put his foot down a little more and go, you know what, mom, does that ship have a water slide? Because I want a water slide. And a lot of times they don't, so he has to settle for the pool. He likes the heated and covered pools a lot on Princess, and he's vocal about that. He loves hot tubs. He likes going between the hot tubs and the pools to stay warm, you know? Um, what else does he like to do, honey? Well, if it has an arcade, he likes oh, to go to the arcade. He loves the arcade. He likes to check out the kids' center, but not always go into it. <laughs> um, other than that, he's a pretty darn good sport. Yes, Boots and Bling, you missed it. So you need to go watch the end of last week's Saturday vlog. Congratulations. All right. What else we got, Mr. Chris? Anita Christmas? Sebastian. Anita, okay. He's sailing with her son, his wife, and their five. Children. Oh, I see that question. Oh, okay, five children. Seven. Oh, yeah. Okay, Anita, you're sailing with your son, his wife, and their five children, ages seven months to 13 years. Advice for big groups with kids. They've never cruised before, but we have. Okay, Anita. Okay, seven months to 13 years. I have a video that we made on cruising with kids, and I'm going to I want to get that to you. So if you don't see me linking to it, email me, sherry at cruisetipstv.com, and I'll email you the video. The first thing that popped into my mind when you asked this question was to make sure that you pack essential medication for all of those age groups. I would never go on a cruise with five children without some kind of pain reliever, ibuprofen for children of all ages, cold medicine, allergy medicine. Pack your own medication. Chances are, and I'm please forgive me for being a little bit of a doomsdayer here, Chances are one of those kids is gonna get a sniffle or a fever on that cruise. I pray that they don't, but please be prepared and do not expect the ship to have stuff for you. Um, I would suggest that you choose early dining uh, because of the fact that you've got little, little seven month old and little ones. Get that early dining done, enjoy dinner together every night, but then they can kind of go do their own thing. Other than that, without knowing your family, it's a little bit difficult for me to give you a whole lot of advice on, you know, the cruise itself because I don't know which cruise line you're going on. However, I would suggest that you and the family have some kind of a pre-cruise pre, uh, pre planning party. And if you don't live near one another, have a pre-cruise Skype party. So what you could do is you could all get together and you could talk about the essential things that you need to prepare for before a cruise. First thing you prepare for was what to pack. Make sure you have plenty of diapers for the seven month old and the little ones, right? Try to get those diapers in the suitcase. Try not to worry about buying them on board and think about all the essentials and take a little extra of everything. This is a time for a little bit of overpacking. If your cruise line offers laundry detergent, excuse me, offers self-serve laundry, pack laundry detergent. So that would be another thing you might wanna to prepare to do is do some laundry. It actually may make your cruise a little bit less stressful to know that you can do lots of laundry. Of course, pack loads of sunscreen. And when you're doing your pre-cruise planning party, talk to everyone about what they wanna do. What do you wanna get out of this cruise? Do we wanna do as many activities as we can or do we wanna rest? How often are we obligated to see each other? I know that's unpleasant to talk about, but talk about that. What are we gonna do? When are we gonna to be together? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner all the time, activities only, dinner only. What is the expectation and what does everyone want so that before you get on that ship, you got some happy campers? I hope that that helps you. I think it's a really wonderful topic. Okay, Denisha wants to follow the Cruise Tips TV family on Shipmate. Is there a way to get all of our usernames in one place? Denisha, one way you could do that is to go to my profile on Shipmate, which is Cruise Tips TV, look at my friends, and you'll know that a lot of those people have probably come from here. So let's do that. Okay, Taylor said, my cruise to Alaska is in 182 days. Any tips for teens? Yeah, I would plan, Taylor, I would plan really active excursions that are focused on the glacier, bears, whale watching, things that allow them to get outdoors and see things that they don't normally see in their normal backyard. I think that's really important. Um, 
I would also suggest that if you're sailing with teenagers, make sure they understand how the internet works on that particular cruise ship and that they may not be able to have full internet access all the time. Or consider buying them an internet package so that they can stay connected to their friends through social media. I know that's a big thing with teens. Um, if they want to download, you might want to have them pre-download their music, movies to watch on their phone, and things like that before they go so that they don't have to use bandwidth or Wi-Fi or whatever. So think about internet, think about things like that. Think about things to entertain them. But um, yeah, I would focus on active excursions that get them to see things they don't normally see. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, Cruiser 831 had a question about sure. when was the last possible minute to turn your phone into airplane mode. I think <laughs> Steve Roth has addressed this, but mm -hmm. the Cruiser 831 is going down the Mississippi. Wow. And he's asking, of course, if it's still if they're still going to be roaming fees. Okay, yeah, and honestly, I don't know the answer to that. Well, no, no, if you're down in Mississippi, there won't be. It's there won't be? If you leave, you know, the, if you leave the, the, the continental the United yeah. States. Yeah, so I think Steve is right. Um, okay. I think Cheryl's right. I think um, Cheryl said as soon as she leaves the city to turn it off. Our rule with wherever we're sailing, and this definitely is not a Mississippi River kind of experience talking here, is that you take your sail away picture, you enjoy the sail away experience, but as soon as you see the horizon leaving the distance, you definitely pop that sucker into airplane mode. Now, with that said on the Mississippi River, you might have to really watch your phone and just make sure that you're still with your carrier. You know, make sure that AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, or whatever symbol is up in the left-hand corner. But when in doubt, I think that putting it into airplane mode whenever you feel like you should is probably a good instinct to heed. Okay, Kathy said, are Wi-Fi packages expensive? Kathy, they range from reasonable to very expensive on the varying cruise lines. So it's really difficult. Susie wants to know, do you think leaving my daughter to do her own thing on the cruise is safe? Susie, how old is she? Let me know. Um, Teresa said, best way to communicate with each other between five adults on Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas. Download their app and text each other through their app. There may be a small fee for that. I'm not super familiar with it, but you can definitely do that. You can also call each other's rooms. You can also leave sticky, no sticky notes on your doors. And my last suggestion was you can consider using walkie-talkies, but most people don't do that anymore. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see here. Does Susie tell us how old her daughter is yet? <laughs> oh. No. Okay, uh, I'm ready. Um, Ronnie Simsbury, any tips on what excursions to do in Jamaica and Grand Cayman? Mm -hmm. Ronnie, um, for Jamaica and Grand Cayman, I'm not sure where you're going in Jamaica. I'm not, I haven't sailed a lot to Jamaica. I've only been to Ocho Rios a couple times. But for Grand Cayman, we love the beach clubs. We love to go to Nachi Kakom. If you're into more of a quiet, tranquil experience, it's wonderful. Um, there's a lot of really great things to do there. Just do something. Don't get off the, the, the ship and just walk around in the shops. You will not have the Cozumel experience. Yeah. Okay, Ryan said that Carnival's app is $5, but it's a lifesaver. Yes, definitely. Hey, Alyssa and Grant, thank you so much for sharing your vlog with us. It was really cute. I loved it. Loved watching it. Okay, what other questions do we have, Mr. Christophe's TV? Aaron LeClaire says, what's your favorite souvenir you've ever gotten from a warmer climate port? A warmer climate port? I was just, When she said favorite souvenir, I was thinking about my... Um, my I, we rarely buy souvenirs. I know that sounds really weird, but we don't. We just don't shop a lot on cruises. Mr. Christmas TV, will you go get me the little boots that are hanging on the Christmas tree, bottom left? They're the little Alaska boots. My favorite souvenir I've ever got on a cruise, I think may actually be uh, from Alaska. So it's not a warm weather cruise. What would I buy? Um, I actually, okay, I have an answer for you. I do, but I wasn't on a cruise. I was in a cruise port, but I was on a land vacation. And I was on, I was near Cancun on the island of Isla Mujeres, and I got a beautiful blue necklace from a street vendor in Mexico. I like me jewelry from Mexico, but my favorite all-time um, thing I've ever gotten on any port is probably this ornament. It's just a little pair of Alaska boots. These are the boots everyone wears in Alaska, and I just, I look at these, and I think I love these. I, this, this solidified kind of the, the bar that I hold all souvenirs to, but I'm really easy when it comes to stuff like that. We just don't, we don't cruise to shop all that much. Um, we got some really neat things in Alaska. 
when we went on the White Pass Rail, uh, we got hats from the railway that were really special to us and that we absolutely love and that fit us all really well. So, yeah. All right. Um, PJ Gustafson said, favorite thing during carnival tea time will be scones and the tea itself, PJ. Yeah. Okay, what other questions, Mr. Cruz Tips TV? Anything else? Queuing uh, up? No. Nothing else major? Yeah, okay. Some, something from Tracy Rebus, but Tracy. it needs clarification. It just says taking a cruise in the off season price. So oh, okay. Tracy Rivas, I'm not sure about your question with taking a cruise during the off-season price. I mean, you should see uh, you should see prices drop during the off-season. It can be a great time to cruise. Just be careful because sometimes off-season means something bad. It could mean that it could be hurricane season in the Caribbean. It can mean that it could be rainy season somewhere else. So just be just be cautious. Um, Obby School said, what are some places to visit this winter when cruising? Really depends on where you live. If you're in the United States, the Caribbean is really popular. And so is the Mexican Riviera, if you're over here on the West Coast with us. If you're on the East Coast, um, the Caribbean is very popular. Uh, if you're, in the, if you're in, the, in the East Coast, but more like the Northern East, kind of Northeast area, a lot of people out there like to do Bermuda cruises. I've heard that that's very popular. So, um, Grit and Fortitude you're, said that Susie said her daughter is 15. Yes, um, I would say your daughter is going to be by herself much of the time on the cruise. Cruise lines are very contained, and I, I do see that most people do let their children roam above the age of about 12. Our son never leaves our side, but he's really little. He's only nine, so we're not there yet, but most kids do roam free. And I really feel that people, it, their experience when cruising is that their children are safer because when you're not in port, you are on a vessel that is very contained. So I think you're probably going to be fine, and you're going to find that your daughter is okay. Ginny, you've never sailed on Princess. Is there anything special to look? <laughs> Ginny, my Siri thought I was talking to her, but I was talking to you. Um, on Princess, there's so much to look for. We made a few videos, Ginny, on Princess. So if you go to the video section, um, type in Princess or Princess Tips and Tricks, and we have two videos, a part one and a part two, on things you need to know about Princess. I think that's a better way for you to go about this because so much more information is gonna be delivered to you from talking about the private area for adults only on the pool deck to some of our favorite things on Princess like tea time to the ultimate balcony dining. There's a lot of really special things about Princess, so check that out. All right. Oh, I love that. Boots and Bling said their favorite souvenir is getting a tree ornament from each port. I love that too. And you know what else we've done before, you guys? We've, ha we've actually purchased a few ornaments. Um, not ornaments, I'm so sorry. Uh, snow globes um, in port. So I've got one or two from port, but I also like purchasing them on the ship in the gift shop because I think they're really cute. All right, you guys. You are so welcome, Katya. All right, everybody who has last minute questions, now is your chance. We're gonna log off in less than five minutes. So I'm gonna give it just a moment. I wanted to let everybody know that our next live stream is next Saturday, December 30th. We're gonna be talking about 2018 cruise goals. We're gonna to wanna to hear from you and find out what your 2018 cruise goals are. And we're gonna talk about ours, not just what cruises we're going on, because right now, the only one we actually have booked is Norwegian Bliss in October. But we're going to talk about what we want to get out of our cruises and how we want 2018 to be a little different. So I'm excited to hear from you guys about what you're planning. And I'm going to look for those questions right now. I think we're good. Just Dre, I want to know oh. if there is a site uh -huh. that um, she can find out what boats will be in port during her cruise. Yes. Okay. Just Drea, you can definitely find out port schedules for any port, but really I don't know the name of the site because it varies depending on whether it's in the Caribbean, but just Google. Go to Google and type into the search engine um, whatever port it is that you're looking for. So let's just say Grand Cayman. Type in Grand Cayman Port Ship Schedule 2018. And then stuff will pop up and you'll find it. Easy peasy. Okay. Um, Chevy's in first question, do checked suitcases fit under the beds? Usually, yes. It's very rare that we've had issues with luggage fitting under the bed. I think it's only happened one time and it was either a monster suitcase or a really weirdly small bed. Okay. All right, you guys, Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you for tuning in today on this very busy time of year. I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. 
Merry everything, as my shirt says today. I'll give you a little close up of that. And know that we love you and we're so thankful for all of you. Thank you so much for helping us in 2017 to get to 25,000 subscribers. We really appreciate it. We love the growth that our channel has experienced this year and that it's brought us closer to you because that is what this is all about. Merry Christmas and until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye bye. Cruise around the week. <laughs>